Digital twins are everywhere. The virtual replicas of physical entities are revolutionizing industries from manufacturing to healthcare to urban planning with their advanced simulation capabilities. Let's examine how we got to this point and what the future may hold. In 1950, Alan Turing publishes Computing Machinery and Intelligence. It introduces what's now known as the Turing Test for determining whether a machine can behave intelligently. Though it's primarily focused on AI, Turing's paper provides the theoretical and computational foundations necessary to build smart data-driven virtual models of physical assets. The hero of our story tonight is the giant electronic brain developed by Remington Rand, UNIVAC. The UNIVAC, the first commercially produced computer in the United States, is released in 1951. First deployed at the U.S. Census Bureau, the UNIVAC-1 offers a glimpse into the potential of computing to handle vast amounts of data quickly and accurately to solve complex problems. You see, UNIVAC can take the past histories of thousands and thousands of storms, analyze them, compare them with developing conditions, and make predictions, all in a matter of minutes. Calculations that would ordinarily take hundreds of man hours to... Monte Carlo simulations go mainstream around 1952. The experimentation method was initially developed for the Manhattan Project efforts to create an atomic bomb during World War II. As part of the secret U.S. government research program, scientists relied on random sampling and computational algorithms to solve complex problems related to nuclear reactions. After the war, the techniques are adopted in fields like physics, engineering, and finance to model complex systems and predict outcomes under various conditions. The ability to perform these simulations accurately is crucial for the future development of digital twin technology, which also depends on real-time data and predictive modeling. Electron represents the most advanced coding system available today and is a forerunner of a universal coding language towards which we are working. In the mid-50s, IBM's Fortran delivers the computational power necessary for early forms of digital modeling and simulations. Its ability to handle large-scale computations and numerical analysis advances technology required for future digital twinning. In 1957, the Soviet Union launches Sputnik, touching off the space race with the United States that accelerates simulation technology. Space is open to us now, and our eagerness to share its meaning is not governed by the efforts of others. We go into space because whatever mankind must undertake, free men must fully share. The pressure pushes scientists to develop superior computer models to predict satellite paths and behavior in space. In the early 1960s, the aerospace industry begins using digital simulations to design and test aircraft. Engineers create virtual models of designs to predict future performance under different conditions to improve safety and performance. Ivan Sutherland develops Sketchbag for computer-aided design. It revolutionizes the way engineers and designers work by enabling precise digital drawings and models. In 1964, Jay Forrester introduces System Dynamics, a methodology for modeling and simulating complex systems. The approach unlocks the ability for engineers and scientists to understand and predict the behavior of interconnected systems over time. I don't know what it was. Okay. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. We've had a main bus on a bolt. In April 1970, the Apollo 13 mission to the moon almost ends tragically. Two days into NASA's third lunar mission, an oxygen tank explodes, jeopardizing the lives of the astronauts aboard. The crew never makes it to the moon, but their lives are spared thanks to NASA's control room, who use what some would later call the first application of digital twin technology. Whether the simulations meet the technical definition of digital twinning is debated, but the mission's legacy in advancing real-time simulation and problem-solving with digital technology is cemented. The most important thing is the dimensions that appear on a mechanical drawing on our system are described analytically as well. Any dimension on this drawing can be selected with the data template. In the early 1980s, CAD software enters the mainstream. Autodesk releases AutoCAD, making the technology accessible to engineers and designers creating detailed 2D and 3D digital models. 
The widespread adoption of AutoCAD normalizes powerful tools for creating precise virtual representations of physical objects. In 1985, Francois Castring, then head of product engineering and development at AMC Motors, is tasked with bringing a downsized version of the Jeep Cherokee to market to reignite the public's interest in the brand. To accelerate product development, the automaker deploys a system that centralizes CAD files in a way that enables engineers to efficiently communicate during the product development process. Since the engineering data is readily available to teams, change requests are actioned much quicker. The investment in product data management quickly pays off. When Chrysler buys AMC in 1987, the system is developed further into the product life cycle. It's a watershed moment that leads to leaps in product lifecycle management systems throughout the 1990s. PLM platforms integrate various tools and processes, including CAD, to ensure consistency and accuracy of data and enhance communication across departments. Managing vast amounts of data via a single source of truth enables continuous improvement throughout the product lifecycle. The 1991 book, Mirror Worlds, or the day software puts the universe in a shoebox, how it will happen and what it will mean by David Galernter forecasts the development of detailed digital model replicas of real-world entities. He doesn't use the term directly, but his ideas are fundamentally related to digital twin technology as we understand it today. Galernter describes mirror worlds as software models of some chunk of reality, some piece of the real world going on outside your window. He illustrates oceans of information flowing endlessly into the model via a maze of software pipes and hoses. The detailed models, he writes, are rich, updatable, and interactive simulations that reflect real-world counterparts in digital form. The information is collected via sensors and input devices and distributed via computer networks. In 2002, Michael Greaves introduces the concept of the digital twin at a Society of Manufacturing Engineers conference in Michigan. He defines it as a virtual representation of a physical product that spans its entire life cycle. A digital twin is used to optimize and manage the product from ideation to end of life. In 2010, NASA develops a strategic roadmap for digital twin adoption for future missions. It emphasizes integrations of virtual and physical models to enhance the design, testing, and operation of spacecraft and other systems. The fourth industrial revolution begins in earnest in 2011, as the Industry 4.0 concept is introduced at Germany's Hanover Fair. The new era emphasizes the integration of cyber-physical systems, the Internet of Things, and cloud computing into manufacturing and industrial processes. The future is already here. The future has begun. Why this fourth industrial revolution is so crucial? It's coming like a tsunami. In 2017, General Electric introduces its digital twin technology for industrial applications. GE's Digital Twin for Industrial Internet allows for real-time monitoring and predictive maintenance of complex systems like jet engines, power plants, and industrial machinery. It's a significant advancement that demonstrates digital twinning's potential for optimizing performance, reducing downtime, and maximizing the lifespan of industrial equipment. The 2018 launch of Microsoft's Azure Digital Twins platform accelerates adoption with a comprehensive cloud-based service. It enables businesses across sectors to create and manage virtual replicas of physical entities. In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic accelerates adoption of advanced manufacturing technologies, including digital twins, as companies seek to mitigate the disruptions in their operations, supply chains, and workforces. Siemens introduces its accelerator platform in 2021. It integrates digital twin technology with IoT, edge computing, and AI so businesses can create and manage highly detailed virtual twins of their products. It offers a scalable and flexible solution that's adopted globally. 
NVIDIA's Omniverse platform, introduced in 2023, integrates AI, simulation, and photorealistic visualization technologies so developers and engineers can build complex virtual worlds mirroring real-life settings. NVIDIA evangelizes digital twin technology in the 2020s with buzzy initiatives like the Earth 2 digital twin of the planet's climate. We're going to see a lot more of these digital twinning systems, um, and the future of artificial intelligence is going to require a lot of digital twin systems. So the ability to understand and how to use these multimodal technologies, including 3D graphics, is going to be really essential to just about everything. Heading into the mid-2020s, manufacturers warm up to the industrial metaverse. In 2024, a staggering 92% of U.S. manufacturing executives surveyed by the World Economic Forum and Accenture say they're exploring augmented and virtual reality applications. Worldwide, the industrial metaverse market is expected to hit $100 billion by 2030. Surging in parallel is digital twin technology, which is integral to the industrial metaverse, and expected to reach $183 billion by 2031. In the present day, digital twins are reaching maturity. The future points to enhanced interoperability between digital twin platforms and deeper integrations with AI, big data, and blockchain. The announcements keep coming as digital twin adoption expands across sectors. One thing is clear. We're just getting started. In the 2030s, digital twins evolved to be more intelligent thanks to advancements in AI, quantum computing, and real-time data integrations. They go beyond simulations and begin self-repairing, self-optimizing, and predicting future scenarios with unprecedented accuracy. The most digitally mature companies possess fully automated production lines require minimal human intervention thanks to real-time monitoring and predictive maintenance. Integrations with robotics and industrial automation systems tighten with digital ones performing complex tasks in unpredictable environments. Human-machine interactions are enhanced with digital twins able to mimic human cognitive responses. Fleets of autonomous vehicles use digital twins to ensure safety, efficiency, and integration with public transportation systems. Toward the end of the decade, citywide digital twins dynamically manage public transportation systems, adjusting routes and schedules in real time based on user demand and traffic conditions. Quantum computing-powered digital twins revolutionize superconductivity and and pharmaceuticals with the design and testing of new materials at the quantum level. Galactic weather forecasting is enabled with digital twins modeling and predicting space weather, opening opportunities in space travel and satellite operations across the solar system. Simulated resource management scenarios for human settlements on the Moon or Mars optimize is the use of local resources and support systems. Digital winds of individual brain functions and pathologies brings personalized neurological treatments and preventative care. In the 2040s, digital winds self-repair, self-optimize, and even self-replicate. Smart factories operate with near zero downtime by continuously predicting and tackling maintenance needs before issues pop up. Digital twins serve as testing and development platforms for AI systems, enabling simulation of real-world environments and interactions without associated risks. Integrations with next-generation renewable energy systems optimize energy flow and storage based on real-time supply and demand data. Advanced simulations and predictive maintenance for spacecraft ensures long-term functionality and safety during missions. Digital twins enable deep-sea and subterranean exploration with real-time data and scenario simulation. Smart nanotechnology advances, with digital twins controlling nanobots used in medical treatments and environmental cleanup. Digital twins extend virtual reality to provide full sensory experiences, allowing users to see, hear, touch, and even smell virtual environments. Augmented reality for ancient structures emerges with digital winds guiding maintenance efforts of the world's earliest known structures and historical sites. Surgeons are equipped with real-time visuals and predictive analytics to improve outcomes and mitigate risks during procedures. In the latter part of the decade, 
Digital twins integrate with neural implants to enhance human memory recovery. Sleep devices interface with digital twins to record, interpret, and even change dreams in real time. Virtual reality evolution therapy uses digital twins to simulate evolutionary changes, helping people adapt to future environmental and societal shifts. Digital twins monitor and regulate nano-ecosystems, balancing microorganism activities for health, agricultural, and environmental applications. Digital twins manage ecosystems on other planets, adjusting conditions to support terrestrial life for future space colonization efforts. Interactive ancestral archives allow people to explore their lineage in virtual environments with realistic simulations of historical contexts and lifestyles. In industrial settings, they continuously experiment with new manufacturing processes, materials, and designs to accelerate innovation. They emulate entire human brains, bridging biological and artificial intelligence, a possible step toward digital immortality. Digital twins of the 2050s make technology from the 2020s look primitive. They're not even called digital twins. They're called synthetic holos now. The new term is necessary because it more accurately describes advanced virtual replicas in their ultimate form. Synthetic holo technology reaches its pinnacle when advanced computer models act like lifelike copies of actual people. Discrete body sensors continuously collect data about vital signs, movements, speech, media consumption, and even emotions. The data is analyzed by otherworldly systems that couple it with hyper-detailed DNA analyses to predict what the real person will most likely do or say next. The holos control synthetic humans that are incredibly lifelike thanks to advancements in material science and bioengineering. They're made of advanced polymers and nanomaterials that mimic the properties of human skin. This synthetic holo adapts to changes in texture, elasticity, and responsiveness to stimuli. They're barely distinguishable from their real-life counterparts aside from legally required markers that identify them as non-human. When asked if they're in a simulation, synthetic humans laugh it off as absurd. 